So this was a case of a 19 year old female neutered domestic shorthead cat with a history of being off food and some weight loss. So let's have a look at what we found on ultrasound. So here we've got um, this very, very skinny cat. We're looking at in loops of intestine here. So we've got jejunal loops here. And what we can see on these loops are if we look at the wall layering, we've got the lumen in the middle um, and then we've got wall layering either side. We've got a um, normal mucosal layer, which is a bit thicker. Um, that's normal for small intestine. Then we've got submucosa, which is um, quite light and then muscularis, which is usually a thin dark layer. But in this cat, the muscularis layer is quite prominent. Um, so we can see the muscularis layer a little bit more prominently than we usually could. And that appears to be diffusely throughout the small intestines here. What we can also see in this image is this large jejunal lymph node here. We've got blood vessel going through in the middle. So we'll just wait for that to come around again. We've got spleen tail coming in there. And here is this jejunal lymph node here. So quite prominent, quite easy to see. Um, we wouldn't normally expect to see it's quite so obviously. Here we've got the splenic tail again popping into view, um, loops of intestine, um, and we can see there's just a slight thickening in that muscularis layer um, in the intestines. Here again, we just had the bladder caudally. Um, and we can see these loops of small intestine um, with that extra muscularis thickening there and the jejunal lymph nodes coming into view here. So here we've got more um, image of that jejunal lymph node and the jejunum with a muscularis layer as well that is thickened. So here's a stationary image so I can um, show you a bit more clearly. So this is a transverse loop of small intestine. We've got the lumen in the center. We've got mucosa, which is dark here on this side and mucosa on this side. Then the next layer is light, which is submucosa up here and up here. And then we've got a thin, dark muscularis layer on this side as well followed by the serosal layer, which is bright white on each side. Um, and just the muscularis layer, the dark layer before the serosa is, is just a bit thickened, a bit thicker than I would normally expect. So to get a better understanding of what we're seeing here, we want to take a fine needle aspirate. So we first of all measure from um, the, the side of the probe that has a light on it, um, that top corner, down to our lesion. So in this case, we want to take a sample from the jejunal lymph nodes and um, we measure that distance. That tells us um, the length of needle that we require. So in this case, um, we're, we're looking at 1.25 centimeters. So an inch needle should give us plenty of room to play around with. So here we're taking a fine needle aspirate. We can see the needle going in here and the needle tip. And we're using the woodpecker technique to just move the needle backwards and forwards um, to take that fine needle aspirate sample. And watching the withdrawal of the needle too. We repeat. So again, we've got this hyperechoic line, which is the needle. Um, if we can't see the needle, we move the probe rather than the needle. And once we've got the tip of the needle in image again, we can perform the woodpecker technique before withdrawing the needle. After we've taken the fine needle aspirates, we want to um, scan in the area to assess whether we've caused any minor bleeding, and if so, to monitor it. Here we can interestingly also see the ileum and where it enters the, the colon here. So we've got the ileocecocolic junction in view here. So we had a thickened muscularis layer throughout the jejunum and we had an enlarged or hypoechoic jejunal lymph node. So we were worried about a possible differential was lymphoma. 
quite high up on our list really with the weight loss and um, lack of eating but also inflammatory bowel disease was high up as well on our list so the fine needle aspirate of the lymph node was useful because it's not terribly invasive only requires a mild sedation and given that the cat was 19 years old the owners were reluctant to put the cat through anything too invasive the fine needle aspirate of this lymph node came back as a mild reactive lymphoid hyperplasia and um, no cells suggestive of neoplasia were found so we could treat this as a inflammatory bowel disease moving forward rather than worrying about possible neoplasia obviously it would be nice to get some cells from the intestinal wall too but in this case it was deemed the intestinal wall was not quite thick enough to guarantee that we wouldn't puncture into the lumen and, and potentially cause a peritonitis so the lymph node was sampled in isolation in this case.